Dear friends in Christ, may God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you, and may his Holy Spirit dwell within your hearts this day and every day. What an exciting sight it must have been that first Pentecost day. In fact, Luke tells us at least twice, amazing, he uses the word, astonishing, bewildering, perplexing. That first Pentecost was a day that really no one expected. It was something that they could hardly have even imagined. Certainly not the disciples. Certainly not those surrounding the people. But isn't that often how it is with the way God works? He does things we don't expect. He works in ways that we couldn't even imagine. He does things that bewilder us and astonish us. Things that catch us off guard. In fact, Isaiah writes in chapter 40, For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? In other words, not us. How could we possibly know the greatness of our God? The amazingness of his power. Even as the Spirit came and dwelt on the disciples, well, they probably were doing something they wouldn't have normally done standing up in the crowd, speaking in languages they didn't know, even sharing the love of Jesus to a crowd who just less than two months ago had put their own Savior to death. Must have been quite the sight. Quite an astonishing experience. As we think about it, though that's, there were some who, they didn't want to hear what the disciples had to say. There were some who really, they thought that the disciples, well, maybe they were just babbling over booze. They had been accused of drinking the new wine, or in other words, they were drunk is what they said. They wanted to mock the power of God in the world. They wanted to mock the power of God working through the Spirit and through their lives. And how true that is. How true that is that we see that those people are out there mocking the power of God. Mocking His almighty hand mocking what he has done. For us as Christians, sometimes that seems like a, a daunting a daunting crowd that looks at us and says, your God is not powerful, your God is not mighty. But how true it is for us that we know the power of the Spirit. Each of us, whether or not we can regularly put our finger on it, knows that despite what the world says, despite what the world claims, our God is powerful and working in each of our lives. The fact that we are here this morning, hearing the gospel word, the fact that we have heard the words of Holy Scripture proclaimed, that is the work of the Holy Spirit, changing lives and changing hearts. How many of us have felt the Spirit work in our lives, changing our hearts and our lives? Perhaps it was when you were older. And, you, and it was after you'd been through many things in your life. You'd experienced many things and you had not experienced the Lord. But that work of the Spirit, even though it was unsuspected, changed your heart. Perhaps it was when you were younger. As your parents brought you to baptism, as you, as you came before the rail to be confirmed. In those times where the Spirit changed your heart. Today we're going to celebrate the confirmation of two young ladies, Emily and Isabel, and I know that you all don't know them as well as I do. I've had a bit of time to get to know them a little more than you, and and today they're going to make promises, declaring what the Spirit has done in their lives. Today they're going to stand before us, and we are going to bear witness to what the Spirit has done in a very real way to how the, see how the Spirit has influenced them, how the Spirit has changed their lives. What you don't know is that less than a year ago, both of these young ladies had not been baptized. In fact, Isabel was just baptized yesterday. What you don't know is that just, just over a year ago, neither of these ladies were part of God's family. But as the Spirit has worked in them, as the Spirit has drawn them in, He has shown them His way and shown them His will. He has changed their hearts and changed their lives and welcomed them into His embrace. How beautiful. How beautiful it is to see the work of the Spirit, to, see, to know that full well. The truth is, so often, we miss the working of the Spirit. We miss the work of the Holy Spirit. We don't have days like Pentecost Sunday, like they did that first one anyhow, where 3,000 people are baptized, where fire is glowing above our heads. We don't always see it. And Well, with the way things are in our world today, sometimes it's really hard to see the work of the Spirit. There are so many influences out there. Think about your own lives for just a minute. What influences have there been in your lives? Think about the way that you were raised. 
Think about those who are around you, your friends that you choose. Think about the, the media that you watch or listen to, the media that you read. What influences are there? What influences are you being shown in each of those forms? Many times those medias are not influencing us towards godly living, are they? Oftentimes those medias that are out there, whether it be the television, the radio, whether it be a book or the internet, those medias have a much different message for us, don't they? We know that there is great power and influence. That's why there's so much advertising. But just think about your life. What influences have there been recently in your life? Growing up, I'm sure many people would say their parents, friends, teachers, pastors. As you get older, it becomes colleagues and bosses. Some of those influences are good, and some of those influences are bad. Some of those influences begin from God, and some of those influences begin from Satan. Those influences from God are those influences of His Holy Word in our lives. Those influences of God are as He speaks to us through prayer, as He leads us in our, by His Holy Spirit. But we see so many un, other influences that make us deaf to the will and the influence of God in our lives. There's influences out there saying, live how you want to live. Be who you want to be. Do what you want to do. And it's okay because it's your life. If you want to have premarital sex, go for it because it's okay. If you want to try illicit drugs and get drunk, go for it. It's your choice. If you want to distrust Scripture and say that it was written by a bunch of chauvinist men 2,000 years, years ago, well, that's your choice to not believe. But that is not what Scripture says at all, is it? That is not what God's Word says to us. Those are not the influences of the Bible. And there are those influences out there, though, that are inundating us each and every day. There are those influences that are constantly surrounding us and compounding upon us. And there are those influences that start with only one, and that is the devil. Because the devil isn't out there trying to convince us that there's no God. The devil isn't out there trying to tell us that the Pentecost didn't happen or that the Holy Spirit never came. He knows that he'd be unsuccessful if he did that. Instead, the, the devil works in a more insidious way. He makes us distrust God. He knocks out our values and our beliefs. He makes us question those things which we've been taught growing up. He makes us question those promises that we made before God. And so think about those influences. Which of those influences are influencing you And if you don't believe that influence is effective, just think about your children. Jacob, my son, he's only 13 months old. He already imitates Carla and me in the gestures we make on our face, in the way that we respond. We see those same things at 13 months. Imagine your children as they, as they have been raised in your household, as they've been raised around you, or your grandchildren. What influences are inundating them? Is the Spirit given opportunity to work in their lives? It's a pretty scary thought, isn't it? To know that there are so many influences beyond those influences that even we may teach as parents and grandparents. It's scary to think that there are many other influences beyond the Bible that, is, that, that are affecting our families and our loved ones today. And we see that. We see that in the way our society responds to things, in the way they, they take on the things that are happening in this world. We see how those influences have colored their voting, how, they, how, their influence, how those influences have colored their hearts. And so as a church, what is the influence that we have? What is our influence? We have the Holy Spirit. We have the power of God, the almighty God behind us. We have the power of God living with us each and every day. The Holy Spirit came not just for a one-time show. 
He didn't just come on Pentecost and change the languages for the, for the disciples, but he opened our hearts. He opens our minds, our lives, to share the good news of God with others, to be a positive influence in this world, to be an influence of the true gospel, to not stand back, to not stand by and be influenced, but to influence others. We are under the influence of our God. We have been shown His love and His mercy. We have been shown His forgiveness time and time again. We have been welcomed to His table to receive the gifts of His sacraments. And we have the Spirit leading us out. But will we? Will we do it? Will we, under the influence of our God, go? Because isn't that the greater, the greater question? of who we can influence. Who has God placed in your life that you can be influential to? Is it your son, your daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter, your, your a cousin, a close friend? Is it a, someone you work with? Is it someone who you teach? Is it someone who's close to you? Is it someone that you attend a service club with? Think about those people God has placed in your life because He hasn't put them there for no reason. He hasn't placed those people in your life just for you to ignore. He has placed those people in your life that as He has first influenced you by His Holy Spirit, that you may influence others by His Spirit living within you. That by your words, by your actions, by your decisions, they may know the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not powerless. He is not impotent. The Holy Spirit is the one who guides us to righteousness, who guides us to the power. The Holy Spirit is influence of hope and comfort in a world that is hopeless. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings us peace in a world full of chaos. The Holy Spirit is the one who, is the, who leads us that we may stand up for our Savior, that we may stand up for the cross. This is what Pentecost is about. It is not just the birth of the church. It is not just the first time that the church started. But the Pentecost is a reminder each and every day of our lives that our Lord is continuing to work in us. That our Lord has a mission and a plan for each one of us. That our Lord has sent us to be an influence in this world. And so as the people of God, do you accept His challenge? Do you accept His, his plan? Many of us, it's easier not to. We've been received, redeemed. We've been justified. We've been made right before God. And so it's easier for us to focus on our salvation. But when we look at what God has done, how can we not go out? As we are people who have been made right, how can we not desire that for others? That they may also be made right by the Holy Spirit in their lives. Today, Isabel and Emily, they will make promises before God. They will stand before you. And they will make promises to hear the word, to believe the word, to share the word. Many of us made those same promises. Many of us made those same promises to believe and to share the word of God. Are we keeping those promises? As sinful human beings, oftentimes the answer is no. But thanks be to God, we have a Savior who has kept every one of His promises. Thanks be to God that we have a Savior who just as He made the promise in the Garden of Eden, that He kept that promise. As He died on the cross, as He suffered, as He was buried, but as He rose again and ascended into heaven, He gave us that promise that not only would He redeem us, but that He would be with us each and every day. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Already that promise was made back in Deuteronomy chapter 31, repeated by Paul, repeated again by the author of Hebrews. That promise that our Lord is with us, that His Spirit dwells with us, that His Spirit of power will not leave us, but will be with us. And it will one day lead us to be with Him forever. So we do celebrate. We do lift our hearts in joy on this Pentecost day. Because we know that our Savior kept His promise. That our Savior did die. That He did live. So that we may live. And that His Spirit continues to dwell with us this day and every day. 
May his peace be with you now and always. Amen. I invite you to please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to live in our hearts, to guide our ways and to direct our paths. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to see those who are in need, that we, you would lift our hearts to share your love with others, that you would fill our hearts with the joy of knowing our salvation. Lord, we pray that you would forgive us for those times when we are more focused on ourselves, when we are deaf to your voice. Draw us again back to you, that we may repent and that we may know with full assurance the promise of your forgiveness. Lord, may your spirit dwell in our hearts this day and every day. And in your name we pray. Amen.